Dirk Biggs here with PSAID, and today we're going to be talking about triggers versus cues. When you're dealing with conflict, it's very important to know yourself and know what ticks you off and know how to realize that you're being ticked off out there. So, we're talking about triggers and cues. First of all, what is a trigger? Uh, I used to be offended by students that would say, well, triggers the piece, the mechanism on the gun that sets it off. And I used to say, well, let's don't use that example right there. But I got to thinking, and I was like, you know what? That is correct. It's a mechanism that sets you off. It's those things that get you from zero to 100, not in a minute, like that, okay? I'll get to cues in a second, but triggers are those instances, those moments, those situations where you go from zero to 100 in probably less than a second. So let's look at some of the triggers that we deal with. Maybe some of the triggers that you deal with on a daily basis. A trigger that I hear about from my students a lot is when somebody disrespects them being disrespected. That seems to seem to be a major trigger within a lot of our folks and a lot of our youth too, being disrespected. Another trigger that I've heard from a lot of my students is joking on family. Don't talk about my mom, don't talk about my dad. Don't you dare talk about my grandma. It's a trigger, okay? Zero to 100 in less than a second. Another trigger might be, I'm gonna be honest, a trigger of mine I have to be careful with is road rage. I drive every day, and in my travels, there's a lot of times where it's bumper to bumper, folks are flashing their lights, people are being quite rude, I have to take a deep breath sometimes and realize that my emotions are going high and my thinking's low, so road rage is a major trigger. Some other triggers might be, I've had students tell me I'm getting abused, they don't like being touched, they don't like being you know, talked about real loud, and when I say abused, it doesn't have to be like child abuse or anything like that, just being abused on a daily basis, people, you know, messing with you, people talking about you all the time, it sets off triggers, okay? It gets old after a while. When you talk to students, they really have a hard time when they feel that they're getting abused. Another one we deal with, and we'll talk about this later, is all the negativity that we're having on social media. A lot of the issues that are triggering our students and triggering you guys is that social media comes into play and you can go from zero to 100 based on the statements, the comments, the posts that are out there in a negative way about you. Other triggers can be when they're involved with sports slash activities. A lot of times they're having a good time and somebody will get, take advantage of somebody, like in basketball, somebody will start getting the upper hand and the next thing you know, folks are triggered based on the fact that they don't feel they're competing good enough or other people are clowning them as the game goes on. And we can go on and on. Think about some triggers that trigger you guys out there. Think about those triggers every day when people do things or say things, you go from zero to 100 just like that. Take a moment and think about those triggers out there that really get you going, okay? Think about some of those. One of my anger triggers is when my sister is annoying me especially when she's singing songs that I don't like. One of my anger triggers is when somebody don't listen to me. One of my anger triggers is when somebody's, um, when somebody's mess messing with me and like not giving me any personal space. Um, and Joe, what are you doing? Get out of my personal space, please, Joe. I've also heard a lot of folks talk about when they say people in their family that have deceased, such a trigger off, okay? You might get in these arguments and the next thing you know they're talking about somebody in your family that has passed away, major trigger, okay, major trigger. I've also had students tell me one of the major triggers they deal with is being embarrassed, okay? Students, sometimes you all told me that you do not like being embarrassed, especially when it's in front of a lot of other people because that triggers you. Might be a situation where you know that everybody's going to be watching and maybe you don't come through with, with the answer or the situation you need to and you become embarrassed, it sets you off. So students, think about those triggers out there that get you from zero to 100 in like half a second. And basically that's what a trigger is. And hopefully by now some of you are out there saying, oh yeah. I know this trigger right here, when she does this or he does that, uh, that triggers me. Think about those answers. It can go on and on. I've even had students tell me a big trigger is when they buy new shoes. And you all out there know what I'm talking about. You get those new shoes, those new Jordans, somebody steps on them, you go from zero to 100 like that. 
those are triggers. So be thinking about the things that trigger you because the lesson is going to basically reflect that if you know your triggers, we're going to talk about cues in a second, but if you know your triggers, those things that get you there, you might have a better situation, a better way to deal with them. And like anything else, it takes practice. So part two of this lesson is cues. Cues is a little different. Cues basically were triggers are the things that set you off. Cues are more physical. Cues is what your body goes through. And I love doing this part of the lesson because a lot of times when I'm talking to my students, you start hearing, oh yeah, ooh, I forgot about that. My body does do that. So it's not the action you do, it's basically what your body goes through. For example, when you start getting very upset and you're triggered, you might have your veins start popping. Veins might start popping. So now that I've told you that first one, I want you to be able to sit back and say, now I get what he's saying. Veins popping, maybe. Sweating. Maybe you get goosebumps. Maybe that heart rate starts picking up. In my own personal situation, it doesn't happen often, but I know a major cue for me is I bite my lip. Ugh. I can bite my lip so hard sometimes that I'm really having a, a bad situation that my lip may bleed. And that's when you know that your cues are letting you know that things are not going in the best direction. Some other cues can be we have veins popping, sweating, goosebumps, heart rate, biting your lip. Another one could be you may start tapping your toes or tapping your, you know, tapping your hands. Shortness of breath. Another cue could be maybe, and I've done this before, another cue could be maybe you cry. And it may not be the boo hooing type crying. It might be just that one tear that comes down that lets you know that I am starting to go in a direction I don't need to. Okay? So be thinking about those cues, those actions in which your body's trying to warn you that you're getting ready to go to another level. One of my anger cues is my ears will get real hot and probably turn red and um, I'll get kind of sweaty. My anger cue is I, um, I just stare at them. One of my anger cues is I tear up and it's really embarrassing because you don't want to tear up when you're trying to be assertive or you're in an argument, but that's definitely one of my cues. You put that together with your triggers, what got you there in the first place, and start thinking about what your body goes through. It's very important to realize that cues are basically a signal telling you that right now you're not processing real well. It is so important to know that when your veins are popping, when you have that shortness of breath, when you start sweating, you start getting those goosebumps, you know something's going to pop off. That's a sign that there is time for an intervention. So triggers versus cues are triggers slash cues. It's very important because it's a process in which it's all about you. And once you become good at knowing your own signs, you can identify that in other people. Okay? Bangs popping. I've got a brother that I know when he goes there, it's time for maybe big brother to kind of intervene. That's one of my cues. So be thinking about situations with yourself, maybe your friends, your parents that you know, things start going on with their body, the, you know, the eye twitching, eyes getting bloodshed, bloodshed, crying maybe, tapping of the foot, pacing, that that's a cue. That they're getting ready to go to that next level. It's a great time for an intervention. With triggers and cues, it's very important, especially with yourself, because like anything else, when you start getting the handle of this and you start practicing or knowing those signs, you can handle conflicts and, and situations that can get out of hand a lot better. So that's just about triggers and cues, but I want you all to think out there. Take some time and think. Triggers is what gets you there, but think about what your body goes through. Okay, everybody's body's different. Everybody's body's different, so think about what it goes through. And if you can do that, you're better apt to be able to help handle a situation when the time is needed. Uh, it's not gonna happen overnight, but you can look back at some situations where you can say, ah, I remember sweating, I remember having shortness of breath. I remember pacing, I remember balling up my fist. I remember that one tear coming down, I remember having the goosebumps. That was my body telling me, time to hit the pause button. So think about that. I'm gonna challenge you to think about knowing your body and knowing when those things happen. That that's your cues, letting you know that it's time to take a chill.